Hello, and welcome to Inawera's Process Runner Help Series. In this video, we will demonstrate how to create a transaction automation script utilizing Process Runner. We will be playing the role of a designer user, as only designer users can create automation scripts, while run-only users execute the scripts after they have been created. Let's use the T code AS01, create asset master record, and we will connect the script we create to the data set in this Excel spreadsheet. You may not need to run AS01, but the process we walk through can be used for the T codes relevant to your organization. Let's open Process Runner Enterprise, and here on the starting screen, let's double click on New Transaction. In the New Process pop up window, in the Transaction Code box, we can enter AS01. If you have a custom T code, you can enter it here too, as the same process will work for custom and standard T codes. Let's click on Start Recording, and now we can log on to any SAP system across our SAP landscape. After we put in our password, the SAP GUI pops up, and for our convenience, we will open our Excel spreadsheet in the background to help us see our data. Let's enter our asset class and company code. As we step through each of these screens entering data in the relevant fields, the recording technology of SAP records each of these screens and all of the fields on each of these screens. Let's hit enter to continue our data entry and here in the general tab, let's enter our asset description. Since we only have one field to enter on this screen, let's go to the time dependent tab and enter our cost center. Now let's end the recording process by hitting the save button. Let's click back on Process Runner Enterprise and we are automatically taken to the mapper ribbon. The mapper ribbon is where we connect the recording we just completed to our data set. Process Runner has created an Excel template for us with one row of data mapped to these SAP fields. We have asset class coming from column A, company code from B, asset description from C, and cost center from D. The mapping of these fields is what connects the script with the data set. This Excel template, which our script is currently linked to, is called the iBook. This is an internal instance of Excel, and when we save the script file, the data set and any data we add to it will be stored in the script file. We can add data to the iBook by clicking on the iBook ribbon. From the mapper ribbon, we are not able to enter data. However, since our data is coming from an external instance of Excel, we will need to link our script to our external Excel file. Simply click on the drop-down, select Use External Excel File, locate the Excel file, and open it. Now the external Excel file is linked to our script recording and we just need to ensure that our fields are mapped properly. Again, we have our asset class coming from column A, company code from B, asset description from C, and cost center from D. We can easily change and manipulate our script to match our Excel data layout. For example, if our cost center data was actually in column E, we can simply drag and drop the column to the field, and immediately the cost center is mapped to column E. If we don't want to drag and drop, we can also type in the values manually. If we need to change the mapping type, we can do so from the mapping type dropdown. Currently, our mapping type is set to Excel to SAP, which uploads the data from our Excel spreadsheet to SAP. We have a variety of other choices to pick from, such as SAP to Excel, in which the values would write from SAP to our Excel spreadsheet. We can select fixed single value and hard code a value so our end user is not required to manually input that value into the Excel spreadsheet. We can also select system value and choose from a menu of several system values. The last mapping type is Excel cell value, which maps an individual cell in Excel as opposed to an entire column. If we want to add fields that were on the screens we navigated, we can select the Other Action dropdown, then click Add Fields and add the additional fields we would like. Let's select Quantity and Base Unit of Measure, and as we select them, Process Runner automatically maps them to our script. We can add them by clicking the Add All Selected button, and now they are successfully added. If we click on File and select Save As, we can save different versions of this script with the different mapping types. Let's deactivate the fields we added by clicking on the left side of the fields and while holding the left click mouse button down, select the fields, then select the Row Action dropdown, and select Deactivate Rows. Now our mapping is complete and we are ready to run this script. Let's click on the Home ribbon and here we can set our Start Row and our End Row. Our data set ends at row 11, so let's set that as our end row. Let's push the Run button, and we are prompted to save our script before it executes. 
Next, we are prompted to log on to SAP, so let's confirm our logon credentials and click OK. Now the script executes and the SAP return messaging writes directly to the Excel spreadsheet. If we read the SAP return messaging, we can see we have successfully created the assets in SAP. This video has been a brief overview of how to create a transaction automation script using Process Runner. If you would like further assistance with Process Runner, more online resources can be accessed from the help ribbon, such as step-by-step -step tutorials and video tutorials. Thank you for watching.